What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. In this video, what we got to do is take this function, three, uh, the absolute value of 3 minus the absolute value of x, and graph it. So this is kind of a complex function. Notice we have an absolute value within another absolute value. So one way to graph this is we can graph 3 minus absolute value of x and then reflect all of the negative y values to positive y values. Actually, that method is going to be fairly easy for this one. Or we could take this and convert it to a piecewise function. And converting, it, converting this to a piecewise function is going to be fairly difficult. I'm going to show you how to do it at the end. But let's, uh, let's try the simple method first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 3 minus absolute value of x and I'm going to graph that. And notice we could rewrite this as negative absolute value of x plus 3. So we could just apply simple transformations to the absolute value of x, the parent function, which looks like that. Notice we're going to reflect it in the x-axis. The a value is negative. So that would look like this then after we reflect it. And then we got to shift it up by 3. So it's going to look like that. And this is going to be at a y value of 3. So let me uh, make a bigger graph here. y equals 3 minus absolute value x, the way that looks, is like this. Okay, so this is y equals, uh, sorry, negative absolute value of x plus 3. So just took that expression within that outer absolute value and graphed it. Uh, so this is going to be at 3. This is going to be at positive 3 at negative 3. Notice positive and negative 3, if we plug it in here for this absolute value of x, it's going to make that y value 0, meaning those are the x-intercepts. So now when we take the absolute value of that, all we're doing is taking any negative y values, so these areas here, and just reflecting them, making them positive. So this would be like that. This here would end up being like that. And then this here stays as is because it's already positive. And so erasing this portion, this is still at negative 3 at positive 3. Basically, this graph looks like that. So took negative absolute value x plus 3, graphed it first, reflected all the negative y values, ended up with this. If you take this, plug it into Desmos, you would end up getting this same graph. Now, notice how making a piecewise function, as I mentioned, is going to be difficult because notice how we have four different functions, four different lines, right? So we're going to have four pieces for this. So it's going to be crazy. How do we get four pieces from just this over here? Well, we got to do it in steps and in increments. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to work with this absolute value of x over here. So we know the absolute value of x. If we change that to a piecewise function, it's negative x when x is greater than or equal to 0. Or sorry, it's positive x when x is greater than or equal to 0, and it's negative x when x is less than 0. If x is less than 0, we've got to take whatever that x is and multiply it by negative 1 to change it to a positive. So knowing this, I'm actually going to incorporate this into that. So we can rewrite this here as 3 minus x when... Um, or sorry, the absolute value of 3 minus x. Remember, we still have those absolute value uh, signs on the outside. But this is going to be x when x is greater than or equal to 0. And then we're going to have the absolute value of 3 minus negative x. It's going to be negative x, this, when x is less than 0. Okay, so now if we simplify this, what are we going to have? We're going to have the absolute value of 3 minus x when x is greater than or equal to 0. And then we're going to have the absolute value of 3 plus x when x is less than 0. So took this, simplified it to this by 
taking that absolute value x and creating and using that piecewise function in this overall outer function, if you will. So now what we got to do is we got to work with these absolute values here separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the absolute value of 3 minus x and change that to a piecewise function. And it's going to be 3 minus x when 3 minus x is greater than or equal to 0. And it's going to be negative 3 minus x when 3 minus x is less than 0. When it's negative, we've got to multiply that expression by negative 1. So simplifying all of this, we would end up having negative x plus 3. I'm going to rearrange this. When x is less than or equal to 3, if we bring this negative x over, we'll have x is less than or equal to 3. And then uh, over here, distribute this negative in, we'll have x minus 3 when x is greater than 3. So this simplifies to that there. Okay, or this here simplifies to that. But notice that here's where it gets a little tricky. I'll do my best to explain it. Notice that this function is only defined for this whole function when x is greater than or equal to 0. So basically, this is this. But if we take this and incorporate it into here, notice that we're going to have two intervals because this is when x is greater than or equal to 0. But this here is split up when x is less than 3 and when it's greater than 3. So we would, if we combine these, we would have from 0 when x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 3. And then when x is greater than 3. So we had to take this, x being greater than or equal to 0, and split it up into these two intervals. When x is between 0 and 3, inclusive of those, and then when x is greater than 3, because this is split up into these two intervals. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So one more time, on a number line, we got 0 here. So for all of these values, it's this function, but then this function is different for x values greater than 3 and then less than 3. But because this function is just limited for x values greater than or equal to 0 in the overall function, we ignore this part here. So we're just going to be looking at this interval and then this interval, split it up over here. So this is going to be negative x plus 3 and then x minus 3 right there like that. Okay, and then we got to do the same thing for uh, absolute value of 3 plus x. So I told you that making a piecewise function for this is going to be difficult. So absolute value of 3 plus x, we can change this to 3 plus x when 3 plus x is greater than 0, or negative 3 plus x when 3 plus or uh, let's put greater than or equal to 0, three plus, when uh, 3 plus x is negative, it's going to be negative 3 plus x. We've got to take that negative expression, multiply it by negative 1 to change it to a positive. So this would be x plus 3, isolating for the x when x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And then this is going to be negative x minus 3 when x is uh, less than negative 3. Right, so this function got changed to this, but notice that this function is only defined for x values less than zero for the overall function. So if we draw a number line, zero is here. This function, it's different for x values greater than negative three and x values less than negative three. But because this function is only defined for x values less than 0 in the overall function, we would ignore all of this here. So we'd be looking at this interval and then this interval. So we'd have an interval from um, 
x is less than zero, but greater than or equal to negative three, and then x values less than negative three. So for this interval, it's gonna be x plus three, and then for this interval, it's gonna be negative x minus three. Okay, and then if we took that piecewise function, kind of put it in a better order, notice the order, it's kind of weird here. So if we start from the smallest x values, we'll have x is less than negative three, then x is between negative three and zero, and then x is from zero to positive three, and then x is greater than three kind of took these and put them in a better order. When x is less than negative three, it's negative x minus three. When x is greater than or equal to negative three, but less than zero, it's x plus three. When x is between zero and three, it's negative x plus three. Then when x is greater than three, it's x minus three. So this ends up being that piecewise function, right? So hopefully you got that explanation. So first you gotta change that absolute value of x here and then deal with these two functions separately. But then the intervals for these two functions, you gotta incorporate with these intervals. So these intervals get split up, right? And that's how you get those four pieces that I mentioned initially at the beginning of the, uh, of the video when we had the graph. Right, so kind of complex to make a piecewise function out of this. But if we bring back that graph from the beginning that we had, remember we had a positive three here, negative three, positive three. Notice that the graph corresponds to this over here. So notice when x is less than negative three, it's the line negative x minus three, which is this line over here. If we fully extend it, that's gonna be the line negative x minus three. When x is between negative three and zero, it's the line x plus three, which is this line over here. Positive slope has a y-intercept of positive three. When x is between zero and three, it's gonna be this line, negative x plus three, y-intercept of three, but it has a negative slope. And then when x is greater than three, it's gonna be the line x minus three, which is this line here. If we extend it, it's gonna have a y-intercept of negative three. Right, so notice that this piecewise function does correspond with that initial graph that we had. Right, so if you get something like this, unless your teacher demands that you make a piecewise function, which would be kind of crazy, but um, if they don't demand it, I just recommend graphing three minus absolute value of x, reflecting the negative y values to positive ones. But if you, uh, if you do have to make a piecewise function, then you'd work with this absolute value of x first, and then work with those two other absolute value of three minus x and absolute value of three plus x separately, and then those intervals incorporate into the intervals where x was greater than or equal to zero and x was less than zero.